Beginner's Guide to Yuhi Hive 2. I'm going to cover just about 10 different elements or modules here in this wonderful synthesizer. So we're going to talk about the oscillators, filters, envelope, the LFOs, arpeggiator and sequencer. We have XY pad effects. We have modulations and just general stuff. So let's get started. <laughs> Right, so first of all, let's go through some of the very basic ideas and the overall philosophy. So this is sort of a one page or, I mean, everything you see here, that, that is pretty much it, except we have a couple of things that you need to also know. So in the middle here, we have the hive and you'll see that we have the ARP sequencer. We have the XY, we have the effects here, the scope. We also have wavetable view uh, one and two because we have two wavetables. And other than that, we also have a few other things that can change the screen here. So we have the presets and on the bottom here, we have the keys, we have matrix A, matrix B, and we'll talk about that later. So. We have four different oscillators and oscillators are where sound starts. I mean, this is where we shape the sound, the initial sound, and then it goes into the filter and then we can apply different functions and modulations and things to get the sound evolving. We'll put some effects and there are some other things that you can do to shape the sound. So now let me show you a few things and we are going to get started with the init preset. So I'm gonna right click on the top here, get the init. And now we have pretty much blank uh, slate here. Nothing is uh, working or set except for the first oscillator. So as, as I said, we have four oscillators. We have oscillator one and sub one. And then on the right side, we have oscillator two and sub two, and they are identical. And they, they are pretty cool oscillators though. So we have on the, on the top here, we have this menu. You'll click this. You'll see we, that we have different shapes, different wave shapes. So let me show you how that looks like. So when you select any of those, I mean, we have the sine wave, we have triangle, we have square and all the other usual suspects. And I'm not doing uh, like a deep dive here. So if you need more information, I have a video talking about oscillators, but we also have wavetables. So what exactly is a wavetable? Wavetable is a bunch of wave shapes stuck together and the idea will be to either find some, you know, something that sounds good to you somewhere along the wavetable, but mostly it's about scanning, about evolving, about creating movement in the sound. Of course, I'm going to show you that. So let's have a quick listen to some of the wave shapes and I mean, just appreciate their sound character. Now it is important to note that we have the transposition on the top here. So right now it's minus 12. I'm going to set this back to zero. Right. And that is a sine wave, very, um, very distinct sound, but the sawtooth is completely different. So it is much more, well, it spreads more across the spectrum of and we can go into the scope see what happens and if i go and just focus in and we can just go and set this to something like this so we actually see the so tooth shape. And if I'll change this to triangle or maybe something else like 
uh, white noise. Then everything makes sense. Now you understand what exactly is that shape. So we have something that oscillates and it, it, keep re it just repeats itself in a certain frequency. So it just creates that sound. And now if we go into wavetables, then here we have a, a whole different world. And I'm going to just click this drop down here. And now you have different categories. So we have additive, we have complex FM and so on. So I'm going to show you something really cool. We'll go into formants, which is sort of uh, mimicking uh, human voice. And we'll, talk, we'll, we'll take the talk box and have a listen. Right, so that's how it sounds. But if we'll go into the wavetable one, we'll see more things that we can do with the wavetable um, oscillator. So first of all, on the top, again, we have the menu, right? So we have the categories and we also have the actual um, sounds. And we can also go and just scan through that wavetable. So you see the position right here. <laughs> So you can appreciate how this can be used when you're playing and maybe you want to automate that and create some, some kind of a movement. And by the way, you can do the same scanning by just going with the mouse and clicking and going up and down right here on the wavetable uh, oscillator. Now, if you will click this one shot, you'll see what I mean by scanning. So this is a one shot, but we can also loop. And we can also go to the right and left, I mean, back and forth. Right, so now I want to talk about the second very important thing or module in this synthesizer. So for this, I'm going back into our init preset. And again, we have a so to. So you can hear that we are basically uh, playing something and then when I stop playing, everything stops, it's, it's very dull. So now I want to talk about the envelopes. So we have two envelopes uh, in each side. So we have all four, all in all, we have four. We have amp one, mode one, and then on the other side, of course, the same amp two and mode two. They are identical in terms of how they work. So AMP1 means that this is an envelope that is sort of hooked or hardwired to oscillator one. And now we can see that we have A, D, S, R sliders. So what are these? So first of all, envelope is something that you can apply to many things in synthesis and synthesizers. But I'll give you an example here, which is the simplest one to shape the sound over time. So the attack will be how much time does it take for the sound to reach its maximum velocity? While the release, the last one will be how much time would it take for the sound to fade away when you're lifting your fingers from the keyboard? So let's start with the release because it's the easiest to kind of get. So I'm going to set the release for a longer um, period and I'm going to play. And we can go back into the scope and see this. Right, so it takes time for the sound to just fade away. Now, what I can do, by, by the way, with this uh, envelope is I, I can just grab this uh, uh, target here, this crosshair, I'm going to just get that and drop it right here in the scope. So this is very cool. So once I have that one, I have the amp envelope on the top and the audio sum goes, I mean, left and right going just on the bottom. So, so let's have a listen. So we can see a visualization of the envelope, how it works. So we have a very long release. Now, so the 
attack will be how much time would it take to, to reach the maximum velocity? And now let's have a listen. So we can see how this works. We can create pads and long and evolving sounds. Now the decay and sustain are kind of related. Uh, sustain will be the, the velocity as long as we keep our fingers on the keyboard or maybe programming this in MIDI. And that can be definitely the same as our top velocity, whatever we set with the attack. But maybe we want to have something that starts um, somewhere, gets to the maximum velocity and then drops into a sustained level. And that is exactly why we have the sustain. So I can drop this, uh, let's say 50%. And now let's see. All right, very classical shape of an envelope. Now, if we want something to sound very sharp and plucky, I'll have the attack very short. And we can even have the sustain very, very short or sorry, very, very low. And it means that we are reaching the top of the velocity and dropping immediately. So I think now it's a good time as any to introduce some of the effects. Now I'm doing this not in the order of elements here or how it might be taught in school, but more practical because we want to get some cool sounds fast. So the effects will help us. Now, right now, everything is turned off and we have a, a whole bunch of effects that we can apply. I will start with the reverb and note that you can just click and drag this and position whatever effect anywhere you like. And we can just turn it on by clicking this title here, this button. And if we want more, we'll just mix more. Right, and we can add some delay. And we have different settings for the delay, for example, different settings for the left and for the right. And we can also change this from ping pong to stereo, or maybe change the width, uh, the low pass and the high pass. All right, so things like that really make the sound start to get somewhere. And we can add a bit of distortion and we have different types. So we have soft clip, hard clip, uh, fold back and corrode. So I'm gonna go with the hard clip and we have the amount. And notice the increase in volume. Right, and we can add some chorus effect and maybe a phaser. Now, if we'll change the wave shape, or I mean, just something else other than the saw tooth, we'll get a completely different sound. And this is really fun because you can start messing around, getting into sound, and then just changing the oscillator and get something completely different, which is cool. So I'm gonna change this to, for example, half. And you can see it's sort of a square wave shape where it's not really in the middle. And we can go and change this to wavetable and now go again into, for example, format and get like, a, let's go with Vox 1. And we can go now into wavetable 1 and do this little scanning one shot. Very, very cool. So this is really fun. And now it's probably good time as any to introduce the filter. So everything that you, we hear in Hive 2 goes through one of the filters. It has to. So we have right here the filter just below the oscillator. And we have 
these buttons here, oscillator one, sub one, oscillator two, sub two. And it means that we are routing those sound sources through the filter. Right now, we only have oscillator one turned on. We can turn on also oscillator two and the sub. So everything is now turned on and everything just goes through this one filter. And we can change this to something else, like uh, maybe a wavetable and FM. Right, and we have those sub oscillator that, that brings that low frequency, the, the sub frequencies, and we can change that also to different types. And we can even have white noise. So again, everything goes through one filter. And we have a couple of things to note here. First of all, we have the cutoff, which is where we are cutting, where we're taking some of the frequencies and just removing them. And this is very much related to the type of the filter because on the top here, we have the menu. We'll click this. We have bypass if we just don't want anything to go, but still we want to hear. We have low pass 24, 24 dBs per octave, 12 dBs per octave. We have band pass, high pass, and so on. So different types, even calm and reverb and other things. So now when we're talking about low pass, it means that we are letting the low frequencies pass while just attenuating and removing the high frequencies. And if we'll just play with the cutoff, we'll, we'll definitely hear this. We also have resonance, which creates sort of a bump or a boost around the cutoff point. And this is really great when you're automating that meaning when we are just sort of scaling, opening and closing the filter. And now for this, we have something really cool here in Hive. We have the LFO right here and also the mod envelope. So these two will help us automate the opening and closing of the filter. So we will start with the mod envelope and then we'll go into LFO because we didn't really talk about the LFO yet. So the mod envelope will be just to connect or just to have the mod, the modulation envelope do something on the filter. So we talked about the fact that we have the attack, decay, sustain and release elements in the envelope. So if we'll just have this attack right, right in the middle, it means that we will start um, just having the modulation envelope affect our filter. So I'm going to just uh, play something. Nothing happens. And this is because we need to set this mod envelope either to open or to close. And the amount of time that it takes for, uh, for the filter to open up is really related to this attack. So if we have a very short attack, that will be very fast. If we have a long attack, that will take a lot of time. Right, and again, we have the element of release. So the release will be how much time would it take for the filter in that case to close back when, when we're finishing, when we're taking our fingers off the keyboard. Right. And the decay and sustain are the same. So as long as we're playing anything, then we can, uh, I mean, we, we can definitely set the decay and the sustain. So we can open up the filter and then uh, go back a little, stay there and finally just close. And we can definitely go the other way. So we have the mod envelope going all the way, all the way to the right. We can go all the way to the left. And we can 
set the cutoff point. That will be our starting point. So now uh, let's talk about the LFO. So the LFO is really fun. And this is sort of a type of oscillator. It's a device that just oscillates in a low frequency. And we can use this to automate other things. We can use this to modulate other things. So uh, we are using the mod envelope. I'm going to just go back to sort of the, the zero point, the default. So it doesn't really affect. <laughs> Right, and we'll use the LFO. So I'm going now to just use that all the way to the right. Nice. And you see that it's pretty fast, right? So, and the way it works is that we have, again, a shape. Right now it's a triangle. We'll click this. We can have this as a sign. Then we can set the rate. Right now, we also have some other settings like the gate and the, the time base. I'm not going there right now, but you'll get it. It's very simple. So if we go to the right, it's going to be faster. Going to the left, it's going to be slower. So we are opening and closing, opening and closing repeatedly with this LFO. Now, everywhere you see, so we have this crosshair, we have this uh, target, then you know that we can use this to automate and modulate things. So let me show you how you can use that. And I've already used that with the scope, but let's see how we can use that for other things that we might want to sort of modulate. And let's go and just, again, go into the init preset, clear everything. Right, that's what it sounds, and I'm going to get a bit of release. And now we can also add some reverb. And I'm going to set the size and width, the tone. Cool. And going back into our... Uh, business here we want to see how to use this uh, lfo or the crosshair or anything like that so i can just drag this and use it on the resonance for example and i'm going to set the amount of modulation so once you do this you'll see this little orange dot and you can just click and drag up and that will be the amount of modulation that the device is set now you can see this also on the bottom in matrix A or B, depending how many those modulations you're using. And you can see that we are using LFO1 to affect the filter one resonance. And it's already in motion, it's working. So I'm gonna get the cutoff back. And what we are practically doing is we are bumping and the, I mean we just changing the amount of resonance as set by the LFO. And we can combine that with the LFO here to affect the cutoff. So more things to know about this synth and related to our oscillator, for example, it is the unison. Right now we have one, it means one voice. I can set this to four voices and have a bit of detuning. Or maybe a lot. And again, let's go into the effects and have the distortion. Right, and maybe that's a little bit too much and we can set the rate to be slower. Right, and again, the transpose is going into minus 12. I can set this to anything else. So I'm going to 
zero. And we can set this um, oscillator one to maybe something else. Again, wavetable and clicking this drop down. We have harmonics and let's try this mirror sync. So now let's talk about the arpeggio, arpeggiator and the sequencer. So first, the easy one. So we have the arp here. We'll click this and we have a direction. So when we're talking about uh, arpeggiator, we mean that when we are playing several notes at a time, the hive will just go and play them in order. And this is how it goes. It just goes up and I can change this to maybe up and down one or two. So it just goes all the way to the top and then repeats itself and going down. And we can change the, uh, well, different things here. We, we can change the order. We have serial, round, leap, and so on. We also have number of octaves, which is really cool. So this is the basic idea. And then we have also a sequencer. So I'm not going into a great detail here, but it's pretty easy. So when you click this um, play, you see that we have a few things. First of all, we have the number of steps. Let me play this. And I'm going to turn off the arpeggiator. So we're just repeating, and I can actually transpose this note. And we can change that maybe to seven. And let's uh, change this one to um, 14. And I can also ch transpose this one to minus 12. And I can change the number of steps from 2 to 16. And I'm going to set this to 4. Right, and that's the, the rate it goes, but we can change that, of course, and we can have this uh, much uh, faster, and we can have more steps, and so on. So that's the idea here, and let me show you a few examples of uh, how this is used. So I'm going into the presets, and I'm going back into my favorites, getting Singing Hive, and let's have a listen. And without the sequencer, and with. Right, and now let's turn on the sequencer. And we have a complete sequence here. Right, so right now what we are, uh, I'm, I'm just playing one note and that's how it goes. It just takes that note and as long as I'm playing, it will just transpose it uh, into any of the settings by these uh, columns. And if I'll turn the arpeggiator, then if I'll play a chord, it will do the same, but it will also sequence the notes. So this is the basics of the sequencer and arpeggiator. We also have the XY pad. And actually we have four different modulations ideas that we can uh, use here. And for each one, you can see we have, I'll just click this and we have control A and uh, control A again, that's the A, X and Y. I can just edit this and decide what will be happening here. So um, I can go and set this uh, this first one here and this control and set this to the cutoff for example yeah. right so and th that is the x and i can go and change change this to uh to something else and just have the y go on the resonance. 
So what we are seeing here is that we don't have the amount of modulation uh, like we, we saw before when we drugged the LFO. Here we have the X and the Y to control the amount. And by the way, we have different views. So right now we have this X, Y, and we can go into this separated view where we see each one separately, or we can see this in a sort of a table view. Okay, so next I want to show you the shape sequencer. And on the bottom here, we have four different shapes. We have shape A, B, C, and D. And then we have this uh, control, this display right here. So let me show you how this works. So the blue ones are shape A, the green is shape B, and so on. And we have number of steps here. So I'm going to just close everything and only keep these two. And when I click this, just click the display here, I have the shape and I can just change things and even drag. And you'll see the display here, things like that. So I'm going to drag this crosshair and drop it on the cutoff and set the amount, something like this. And now let's play. Right, that's how it works. And if I add more steps, and we can just go into any of those and change the shape, get this. All right, so that's the idea here. It's a lot of fun and you can use this uh, pretty much on anything. So we can get shape B and change, for example, the, um, well, we can go and change the resonance and do something like this. And we can change the time base. So I can have this 16th. Now we, we can actually go change this to a wavetable, get something interesting. Again, I really love the formats. So I'm gonna go with this and have a shape C modulate the, uh, the different aspects of the wavetable. For example, let's go and change the position. Just draw this. You get the idea, right? It's pretty cool. So finally, a few other things. Uh, we also have the uh, matrices on the bottom. So whatever you do with modulations, you will see that there and you can fine tune things or even start the modulations there. We also have these buttons right here. So um, when you're just going going into our uh, pitch wheel, mode wheel, pressure, all these can affect something. And you see that we have this uh, hover on uh, bullseye and I can get the mode wheel to also do some stuff. So going back to the init and I can just get the mode wheel to affect the cutoff. Again, we'll set the amount and I can go in any direction. And now the mod wheel, and, and I'm going to go into the keys so you'll see what I'm doing. That's the mod wheel. It will open and close the filter. Right. And we also can use this random thing here and put that on the resonance. And so there are many things that we can definitely do and shape the sound as we like. So finally, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Really hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to um, just go and browse through some of the presets that are included. If you like this video so far, it helped you, please 
hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check uh, the videos that I have. I got tons of videos and you're most welcome to join my uh, Discord server. And also, by the way, uh, I have a channel membership that will uh, get you some discounts, free plugins, and also private sessions with myself. So if that's anything interesting to you, if you need more information or anything, just let me know. I'm trying to be very, very available. And I'll see you guys in the next videos. Thanks and bye-bye.